So we're going to get stuck into the third question of the May 2013 PRAC exam for IT. So let's look at the third question. The third question normally could be quite a variety of different things that they could ask. It could be text file handling, could be array handling. It's normally just a general problem solving um, pr problem. Your question one is predominantly SQL. Your question two is predominantly OOP. But the third question could be a variety of ways. So let's have a look at what we've got over here. We've got an SMS competition where there's an, obviously they've get, they're going to give us an array of 20 strings which have got cell phone numbers with answers to a particular competition question. Now they've told us already that the correct answer to the competition question is exercise. So we're obviously going to be looking for the word exercise. Obviously eat and sleep didn't count in this case. So let's go look at the program. Um, just if I go look briefly here, here is the program. If I look, there's an array from 1 to 20. There's some sort of counter that they've got, which I assume will be how many elements are in the array. And we've got, as you can see there, oh, they've manually put in the values from one. Our counter is there 20 elements in the array, and they all have cell phone numbers with lots, a lot of spaces in wrong places and all that. Um, and there they've got it. So let's look at the first question. We must do the extract possible winners option, and we need to extract all the possible winners. So we need to look obviously for the, the in the array, the ones that say exercise. So there's some string manipulation that's going to happen there. And as part of the solution, you have to write a sub program, which that's a function or a procedure, with passing of parameters to remove all the spaces from the cell phone. Okay, so I'm foreseeing that we give the cell phone as a parameter into some sort of function and it's going to return that cell phone of, as a string but without the, the spaces. So let's maybe start with that. So let's go create our function. So over here, I don't know why that's blanked out, but let's go do this over here. I'm going to write a function and what shall we call it? Let's call it remove spaces. And that's going to take in a string. We'll call it temp of type string. And it, when it's finished, it should return a string, and that new string will be the exact same thing as the temp parameter string, but without spaces. So there we go. So press Control Shift C, and now we can write the code of here. Now it is very tempting if I've got an array. Most string handling, we're going to have an array of type integer, or array, sorry, a variable of type integer, and that's going to be my for loop variable. So I'm going to go for r equals 1 to the length of that parameter of, of temp. So 1 to the length of temp. And now I'm going to check each and every one of those. And if it's a, a space, I must delete it. For r equals 1 to the length of temp do. Now this is the tempting part. Now it is very easy if I just put a begin end there just to make sure I don't do more than one thing. It's the end of the for loop. Yeah, so it's very tempting to just go, well, I'm going to check if the temp variable that we've got here, if the temp r, that position, is equal to a space, then it's very easy for me to just go, well, then delete that space. Delete from temp starting at position r for one character. Now, you might think that would be the easiest way to do it, but if you think about it, when we are going through the loop, once you delete that space, now all of a sudden your loop, your 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 length of your temp is not the length that it is now because you deleted a space, and now you start missing characters and skipping it. So you can't actually do it that way. The best way would be to create a string. So we're going to have like a, a temp string here. I'm call it new str of type string. And basically, I'm going to, just like you would do in a sum situation, you would set it to zero and keep adding on to the sum with integers. I'm doing the same thing here with strings. I'm going to set the string to the the numerical version of null of null or naught, which is the null string, which is nothing. So I set it to nothing. Then, when I find a space, okay, then I don't want to add it. So basically, I'm actually looking not for when there's a space, but when it's not a space. When it's not a space, then I must take the new string and take whatever's in that new string and add this character that is at position R. Okay. So that's what we're going to do. And once we finish going through all the characters, then all we have to do is say result is equal to our new string. Okay. 
So there is that part. So we've got our function that does that. Now we need to do the part that says as part of okay, that's we've done that. We need to go through all the possible winners and process and display their cell phone numbers. So we're going to be displaying something like that, cell phone numbers of possible winners. So I'm going to start with the easy part first. So let's go to our form. Extract possible winners. So I'm going to do the easy part over here. I'm first of all going to clear, I think it's a red edit, yes, red display. I'm going to clear whatever's inside it. Then I'm going to display. I'll put in there the first heading that they want us to put in there, which as you can see over here, the first heading, cell phone numbers of possible winners. So I'll just type it in, cell phone numbers of possible winners. And let's look at last there right. Then there's a blank line, so just don't forget the blank line. So we'll say red display dot lines dot add. And we'll just add a blank line. You could even put nothing in the null string. So there we go. So we've got our display working at least. Now I need to obviously go through that f um, array. It has 20 items. So I need a for loop variable, integer. And I need to go from now. Uh, I don't know how the marking would have worked. Because you could say 1 to 20 because you know they're going to be 20 elements. But they've got that I count, if I remember correctly, I counter, which is keeping track of how many. Um, values there are in the array, so I'm just going to use our counter do. Now basically what I want to do is I want to extract, now if I take this for example, let's just copy that string there. That's an example of the string. So let's just say over here we got a begin and I'm just going to put an end which is the end of the for loop. Okay, so over here I just want to see an example of what the string is going to look like for each um, array. Just to remind us of the array is called array entries. So now I want to extract only the part that says exercise. Okay, if exercise is equal to the um, or that part, that's where the answer is going to be. If that is equal to exercise and not eat or sleep, then we know that the answer is correct. So there are lots of ways we could probably extract the cell phone number first. It'll probably be easier, and then extract the last little bit. There are lots of ways of doing it. Um, I'm going to play around with extracting the answer first. So I obviously need to find the position of that, which is going to be some sort of integer. So I'm going to call it um, the colon. Colon. So that's my integer, and obviously I'm going to just store that somewhere. So I'm going to put answer, and let's put cell phone number as well. Cell num as strings as well because I'll probably need that later as well. So let's extract that exercise part. So obviously we find the position of the colon in the now in the array. Now remember our array is entries. Just double check our spelling. Entries and we're looking at R. Okay, so we're looking at and that just to double check that is an array of strings. Yes, it is. Perfect. So check for the position of the comma in the first entry. Okay. Once we've done that, then we need to extract the answer, which will be copying from the array entries, starting at position colon. Now we don't actually want to start from the position of the colon. We want one after the colon. So I'm going to plus or one here, and then we need to extract till the end of the string. Uh, there are lots of ways of working. You could say the length of array entries for technical sake um, minus the colon. So we take the length of entries minus that part will give us the actual length of what's left over. Actually you could just put a hundred and it should work as well. So we copy in the answer. Now um, just a little tip here. Um, we must, if you look at the entries, we're not sure if people are going to be ca uh, case sensitive or not. We obviously um, want to accept all forms of the answer. So I'm going to check if the upper case of answer, if that is equal to exercise. And this way I can cover all cases, whether it's in small case or not, because if it's in small case, irrespective, it'll change it to upper case and then check it. Then, what do we want to do? We want to then extract, obviously, that number. So this is the end of the if statement. 
So when I do that, I obviously need to, I've got the position of the comma already. So now I'm going to say in my cell num variable, cell num is equal to copy starting at pos from, or well, first of all, where are we copy from? Entries are uh, starting at position one until the position of the colon minus one. Why? Because we want to copy here we go, we're going to copy all the way from the colon, minus 1. Okay, and that should be cell phone number. Then we obviously need to use that remove spaces and then just display it. So, so we only do that obviously in this begin end for this if statement. So then I'm going to say cell num is actually going to equal to remove spaces of itself. So it's going to send itself into remove spaces and come back with all the spaces removed. And then I will say red display dot lines dot add. Now I'm going to add the cell phone number to the display. Now you might think, well, that's an integer we must convert it. But remember, cell num is still a string. We're dealing with a cell phone number. There's no calculation that's been done actually on it as a number, so we can leave it as a string. And I hope that is all. It looks like all. Let's see if it works. Any errors will pop up now. For i equals oh, I forgot our colon there. Let's go process exact possible winners. And if we look at those numbers, do they look very similar to these numbers? Yes, they do. So fantastic. We did the first question.